we're going to pick up right where we left off, right? We have a continuous aggregate, but we do not have an automatic refresh policy set up. And they're called continuous aggregates for a reason because we're continuously adding data to our underlying hyper table, which we then want to aggregate on into that continuous aggregate. So to make sure that your data is up to date and materialized or stored, which we learned in the last video, <laughs> you, we, we have to set up this automatic refresh policy. And in this video, we are going to show you exactly that. We're going to give some background on the automatic refresh policy, but we're also going to show you how to do a one-off manual refresh as well, in case you ever need to use it. So we have lots to go over. Let's jump right on over to the desktop and get things started. Like we mentioned in the previous video, continuous aggregates are really effective because of how they materialize or store aggregated data. And so if you add new data to the underlying hyper table, which the, your continuous aggregate is aggregating on, uh, this new data will not be materialized or stored into the continuous aggregate on its own. All right. So this is why you have to create an automatic refresh policy to materialize all of that new data for you. Now, when you query your continuous aggregate, TimescaleDB by default will run um, an on-the-fly aggregation of any unmaterialized data. So you may not notice that your data, your new data is not being materialized, but when you query from your continuous aggregate and you have a lot of data that is not materialized in the continuous aggregate, right, or stored in the continuous aggregate, what's going to happen is that querying from your continuous aggregate will slow down significantly. So you want to make sure that you're you have that automatic refresh policy so that your data, your aggregated data is staying materialized up to date as new data is coming in. So that's really why it's so important is we want to make sure that you get the most efficiency out of your continuous aggregate. That's what makes it so awesome. So um, just before we jump right into creating the automatic refresh policy um, and looking at manually refreshing your continuous aggregate, I think it is very valuable to kind of see a graphical um, representation of what happens when you refresh your data. So. This chart is very similar to the one that we looked at in our previous video. Now we just have a little bit more data in our underlying hyper table, which is that bottom, that bottom line represents, right? Our hyper table data plotted over time. And the top one represents the continuous aggregate data um, materialized in the continuous aggregate over time, okay? Um, and so in this, this time we now have more data and we're calling a refresh policy. And in this case, the purple represents buckets of time that are getting re that are getting aggregated and materialized. Maybe we're calling the refresh policy and those, all of those, uh, small, orange dots from the raw data have not been aggregated and materialized yet into the continuous aggregate. So it's taking all those fully finished time buckets and aggregating that data and materializing it in the continuous aggregate. So that's what the purple kind of represents. Um, but I do want to note, we mentioned this in the last video, but <laughs> when you call a refresh policy, if a time bucket is not complete, so say it's 7 p.m., we call a refresh policy on a daily aggregate. This day is not done. So when we call the refresh policy, what's going to happen is that um, the data from today that was added will not be materialized in the continuous aggregate until this day is finished and we call the refresh policy again. Okay. Just good to note. <laughs> it, it really, since it's only going to affect that last um, time bucket or maybe two time bucket, depending on how your data is set up, uh, it really should not affect that efficiency when you call the continuous aggregate, but it is just good to know. All right, so like we said, the easiest way to make sure that your continuous aggregate stays up to date 
is through the automatic continuous aggregate refresh policy. It's really the set it and forget it option and why we suggest it. <laughs> so let's actually create one and get it set up for our continuous aggregate. So if we remember from last time, our continuous aggregate was called stock candlestick daily. So how we set up an automatic refresh policy is as follows. We do select add continuous aggregate policy. And that's it. <laughs> it's really, we make it super simple. You just call our ref, our refresh policy function and boom, you got it. <laughs> now let's look at the parameters. So we know actually how to call the, um, continuous aggregate policy function. So the first parameter is you're naming the continuous aggregate that you want to set up the policy on which in our case, stock candlestick daily. Then we specify a start offset, end offset, and schedule interval. So the start offset and end offset give the, the bounds of what data you want to be refreshed when this um, continuous aggregate refresh policy is called. So in our case, uh, we are setting up our refresh so that it looks at the last three days to an hour from now, or if we were to run this now, which we will, but so we'll look at the last three days to an hour from now and see, has anything changed? Is there any new data? And then it will materialize and change any, and update anything that needs to be updated. Cool. And then the schedule interval is just saying how often you want this policy to run. So in our case, since it's a daily aggregate, we only need it to run daily because right it shouldn't have any new <laughs> um time buckets fully finished time buckets uh kind of between that so <laughs> so daily makes sense in this case <laughs> so right when it runs we're looking at materialized data from between three days ago and one hour um and it's executing daily okay so now we can look at what it how we would manually refresh, refreshing on our continuous aggregate. So this is again, a one-time refresh function. So it's not going to create that continuous um, refresh policy, right? It's just a one-time thing. You're calling it one time. Um, so maybe it would be useful if you had to update data in the past, or you just want to refresh data in a very specific time interval. So that's where it really can come in handy. So let's look at how we would do it. We do call refresh continuous aggregate. Pretty straightforward. And in this case, the parameters are very similar. You, the first parameter is stock candlestick daily. So we're naming the continuous aggregate that we want to update. Then the now minus interval of one week that's specifying kind of the start offset. And then the now is specifying the end offset essentially. So in this case, maybe we want to refresh data from the last week to now, and we're calling it and boom, one time, all of that data is looked at. Does anything need to be updated, changed, whatever. And there you go. So once we run these, run this one, boom, it does that one time refresh. Um, and that is it. That is refresh policy. So now we have an automatic refresh policy set up on our continuous aggregate. Now we can look at a, another awesome feature from Timescale DB, that being compression. Probably one of my favorite features uh, that Timescale DB offers just because it is so useful and you can save a ton on storage. Very exciting. So you will not want to miss the next video. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss the next video, you'll want to smash that subscribe button. Um, and if this video was helpful or if you enjoyed it or whatever. We always appreciate any likes and comments below as well. Thank you so much friends for taking time out of your very busy schedules to watch this video and all of the videos in the series. I hope that it was helpful in giving you confidence as you set up your continuous aggregates. And as always friends, happy coding.